Hello, hello, it's Jen Dalton here. Got my friend Jack. And we are here to talk about the first 10 days of Whole30. The morning of day one, I weighed myself. That's 190.6 pounds on Whole30 day one. The lowest weight I've had is 185 which brings me to a 51 pound weight loss. When I weighed myself on day one of Whole30, I weighed 190.6 pounds. This does not surprise me because we were definitely trying to eat a lot of the food that could go bad in the 30 days from our fridge. Some of that wasn't healthy food and I'm not gonna lie, we ate pizza a day or two before Whole30 started since we knew we wouldn't be eating pizza for at least 30 days. One thing you're supposed to do before you start Whole30 is clean out your fridge, um, your pantry of all the items that are not Whole30 compliant. I filmed my fridge, freezer, and pantry to show you what was already in my fridge that was not Whole30 and what, um, what already was. I was really surprised that very little food is actually Whole30 compliant, aside from the fresh food that we already had in the fridge. So here's a clip of the fridge before. So I went through the fridge and I sorted what was like Whole30 compliant and what wasn't. So this side of the door is all non-Whole30 compliant food. So you've got pickles, teriyaki sauce, seafood sauce, hummus, um, Heineken beer, salad dressings, and sugar, no sugar added ketchup, which you think wouldn't have sugar in it, but it actually has sucralose, which is a sweetener. And then we got some maple syrup, so natural sugar, but still not allowed, sriracha sauce, which has sugar in it, and then obviously jam and chocolate and caramel sauce have lots of sugar in them. Then on this side, we've got olives, applesauce, yellow mustard, garlic, Dijon mustard, and Tabasco. Those are all A-OK. -okay. So pretty crazy comparison. Those and these are not allowed. <laughs> um, and then I've put at the top of the fridge all the non-whole 30 compliant food. So we're gonna try and eat those up the next few days before August 1st to the best of our ability. So I've got Greek yogurt, cream cheese, sour cream, um, some cooked bacon, pepperoni slices from a previous pizza night. Um, let's see what this is. Oh, it's uh, pineapple. That was in pineapple juice, which had added sugar in it. And we've got some beef hot dogs, which obviously have preservatives in them, so those won't be compliant. Uh, that's leftover hummus, so no beans, so obviously can't have hummus. We've got some nice Parmesan cheese, tofu, and grated Parmesan. So basically, the dairy and the processed meat that is left in the fridge needs to get eaten up before we do our challenge, or we'll be you know, doing whatever with it. Um, some of it Nora eats, and obviously she's not doing Whole30 because she's a baby, so like she likes Greek yogurt and tofu, so those two things she can, um, those two things she can eat during this challenge. So into the freezer, some of this is compliant, some of it is not. Obviously frozen fruit is okay. Um, bread will not be, but Nora eats this, so keep that. These burgers have wheat crumbs in them, so we're gonna do a barbecue um, before August 1st and finish up those burgers. And there's other burgers down there that are just 100% beef, and we'll have those probably during our whole 30. These veggie burgers, which are super good, unfortunately have soy in them, so only Nora will get to enjoy those this month. Burger buns, obviously can't have those. And we've got some salmon, which will be okay. Peas, that will be fine. And oops, we've got some corn, which will be fine too. Then we have um, salmon fillets, that will be okay to eat. 
tons of edamame, which unfortunately will just be for Nora this month. Shrimp, that's Whole30 compliant. And then we've got some frozen spinach and some smoked salmon. To be honest, I'm not sure if smoked salmon would be allowed because I imagine like, cured meats are not, so we'll have to look into that. So this is our, I guess it's our first pantry. This one just has a lot of baking ingredients and seasonings in it. So not much of this is Whole30 compliant. Flax seed, yes. Almonds, yes. Pumpkin seeds, yes. Nutritional yeast, yes. Then we've got some rices, some oats in the back, barley, and what's this back here? Oh, panko breadcrumbs. So that would be a no as well. All-purpose flour, sugar, stevia, cocoa powder, none of that would be okay. I've got some ground almonds. That is okay. So I'm not too sure, to be honest, what I would use that for, but we will find out. And then the rest is mostly seasoning. Um, pure creamed coconut should be okay because it's literally just creamed coconut. And that up there on its side is vanilla extract, which is not allowed due to the alcohol content. And then here we have our like dry goods um, pantry on a Lazy Susan. The only items in this that are Whole30 compliant are um, dates, almond butter, coconut oil, and olive oil. And then the rest, oh, and, and tea, of course. The rest is not. So we've got beans, sauces, pickled beets, which have sugar in them. Even these roasted red peppers have sugar. We've got some tomato sausages that have sugar. Obviously ice cream cups are not allowed. And then we've got a million boxes of pasta. And then down here we have some dried fruit. Um, if it didn't have added sugar, it'd be okay. But this one, these dried cranberries do have added sugar, unfortunately. And crackers, definitely not grenadine. <laughs> so no Shirley Temples this month. Tuna is okay, actually. Capers are okay. And then, like, all these sauces, except the vinegar-based ones, would not be okay because, like, tamari has soy in it. And, yeah, that's it. So, out of this whole full Lazy Susan, only six items are actually Whole30 compliant. So, as you can see, there is a lot of food that really was not whole 30 um i filmed that i think about three or four days before we started so we did try to eat most of the food obviously to eat like a bunch of condiments is pretty difficult but we did get through the um, top shelf of the fridge which is great and the pantry items just you know those are good for a long time so those are just gonna chill there until we're no longer whole 30 yang <laughs> We had to do grocery shopping to get ready for our whole 30 meals. And when we got home, I saw the fresh veggies and thought how beautiful all the colors were. And I had an idea of doing like a aesthetically pleasing looking fridge. I put the food in glass bowls and took it out of the plastic produce bags and tried to make it look aesthetically pleasing. And what I realized from doing that is you end up having a really like eat with your eyes type of fridge, which has been great because it makes everything look extra appealing and delicious. Everything just looks really beautiful and appetizing. So that is a trend that we have kept going in our fridge um, since Whole30 day one, and I'm really loving it. Here's a look at our fridge after we went grocery shopping for our Whole30. So I've got the fridge nice and stocked with lots of veggies. So you can see and then not pictured we've got some more vegetables some meat um, lots and lots of food <laughs> so it's 4 30 on day one um, I'm very hungry so day one of whole 30 um, I was really hungry I don't think I was eating enough food for breakfast or lunch and I was also faced with my first temptation on day one. I went to my mom and dad's house and they offered me some pop. 
Um, obviously I decline. Even though I don't drink pop every day, it's definitely a habit of mine to have like a can when I go visit them. I don't know why, it's just something I always do. So it felt out of routine for sure. But what I have been using is our soda stream. So I carbonate water and then I use um, true lemon, which is just crystallized lemon. It's Whole30 compliant. It adds like a nice flavor to it and it's really great. So let me show you what that is. So this is the true lemon. One packet equals the taste of one wedge and the ingredients are just crystallized lemon, which is citric acid, lemon oil, lemon juice. It's non-GMO, has no artificial preservatives and it's gluten-free. The true lemon um, is really good with carbonated water, whether you carbonate your own water or you buy some from the store. I was also faced with another temptation um, with cookies. <laughs> I am definitely known for baking really good chocolate chip cookies. The recipe's on my blog if you're interested. Oh my god. So these cookies that I make are like a staple in our social get togethers with our friends. I make them all the time. They're super easy and they're really delicious. So I had a couple of friends coming over who I see a few times a year and they had actually asked me to make these cookies since they were um, pretty excited to have them. I made half a batch of the cookies and I put the rest in a to-go container for them to take home with them. I was really surprised that although it was temptation in the sense like I love these cookies, they smell amazing, I'm used to eating them fairly often, I'm really surprised I didn't crave them as much as I thought I would. Um, one side effect I've had is that I feel chilly pretty often. So I looked on some Whole30 forums online and it seemed like it's a pretty common symptom to feel chilly. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure why, but it's not like a terrible chill or anything, but it was noticeably different that I didn't feel as warm as I normally do. <laughs> Hopefully it gets better. One of the biggest changes with Whole30 for me is that I'm eating breakfast now. It is recommended that you eat breakfast on Whole30. So it definitely felt really abnormal eating breakfast the first few days of Whole30. It actually made me feel more hungry around lunchtime than I normally would. thought it was weird, but now that I'm at day 10, I really look forward to breakfast and I'm able to sustain myself much better till lunch. I am missing pizza for sure. In the Whole30 book, she, um, the authors talk about the sugar dragon. Uh, for us, it's definitely been the pizza dragon. About every few days, I have a really intense urge for pizza. It's something that we eat for sure three times a month, if not once a week, whether I make it homemade or we order in. It's just a food that I really enjoy and my husband Chris enjoys it a lot too. So we have been missing pizza. The Whole30 is a test of willpower and by being able to work through cravings, work through temptations, it's really given me a healthy perspective on how much stronger I am. Like you don't always have to say yes to the sweets or you know, given to the pizza craving. Like I have my whole life to eat any food I want and giving up for 30 days isn't that hard. And I'm really appreciating that willpower increase in my life. We are one third through the program, day 10 of Whole30. I'm feeling really good. And if you're interested in following along with the rest of my Whole30 journey, as well as my 100 pound goal weight loss journey, Give me a follow on Instagram at Shay Dalton and like and subscribe this video so that you stay up to date each week. Hope you all have a great day. Jack and I are signing off. This is my impression of Jack's face. I don't think it's very good. <laughs> Pizza dragon, rawr, rawr, rawr.